Hello, and welcome to this BioLearner production on Energy Conversions Made Easy. Life, our lives, and the lives of all organisms on Earth, depend on the ability to store and use energy. If you think about the energy that we use in our lives, much of it is in the form of energy sources, currently fossil fuels or biomass, such as wood. These substances contain what we call chemical potential energy. That means they are made of molecules that have a high level of chemical potential energy in them. Now, you might recall the term potential energy associated with something like a roller coaster. So, for example, we use some form of energy to push the roller coaster to the top of the hill, and it has this high level of potential energy until we give it one more push and it starts to roll down the hill. And that potential mechanical energy is converted to the motion of the roller coaster. And a little bit of that energy, because it's an imperfect, inefficient system, uh, will be released through the friction on the rails. And there'll be some sound and some heat released that way. Similarly, living things rely on chemical potential energy, the energy in the molecules that they eat and that they use to live. So, let's look at this more closely. If we, for example, want to use the energy that's in fossil fuels, oil, coal, natural gas, and wood, a type of biomass, both fossil fuels and wood uh, are originally organic matter. That means that they came from the molecules that were in living things in the past. And these molecules are large carbon compounds with a high level of chemical potential energy. When the molecules are broken apart, they result in smaller, simpler carbon molecules, primarily carbon dioxide, which has a much lower chemical potential energy. So as the molecules are broken down, much of the energy that was in these original molecules is released. Now, when we break down fossil fuels and wood, we often burn them, call that combustion, okay? And if they're burned in the sort of most typical form of combustion, when they're combined with oxygen, result in some kind of flames, right? Then that energy uh, is released fairly quickly. And depending on the system that this is in, uh, the energy can go different places. So think about, for example, if we burn gasoline in an internal combustion engine, okay? Uh, oxygen is combined with the fuel that creates uh, a small explosion, and that energy is converted into um, expanding gas, which pushes on a piston and helps to move the car. So ultimately, that energy is converted into motion. The energy can also be used um, to turn a turbine and produce electricity. Maybe it's being used to heat some water, and the steam is uh, turning the turbine and producing electricity, right? In all of those cases, some of the energy is being converted into the form that we desire, right? Whether that's moving the car down the road uh, or producing electricity to light our homes. Um, but some of, the some of the energy is being released in the form of heat, right? So as you know, a lot of heat comes out of engines uh, when they are running. And that heat energy is essentially lost to the system. As the heat's coming out of that car, it's not helping the car to move down the road. Right? It's essentially lost to the system. Now, interestingly, sometimes when we burn things, the heat is the desired product. So say that we have a wood-burning stove, right? And we burn that wood in the presence of oxygen, and a lot of that heat is converted into some light, right, in the flames, um, but also a lot of heat. Now, perhaps we're actually using that heat to heat our homes or cook our food, right? And in that case, that might be the desired product. But eventually, that heat is going to dissipate. Okay, dissipate means to spread out. And as the heat sort of spreads into the air, the heat energy is still out there, but it's much more spread out, and it's going to sort of go away from the system we care about, and it will no longer be usable to us. Okay, so even though he, uh, energy cannot be created or destroyed, when energy uh, is released in the form of heat and that heat dissipates, it becomes unusable. Um, to the systems of living things. Similarly, if we start to think then about the way 
that organisms work. Okay, again, organisms are going to use the chemical potential energy that they have stored. Now, in this case, of course, life depends on very special organisms that have the ability to um, produce molecules with higher chemical potential energy. So, plants and other photosynthetic organisms are able to use light energy from the sun, ultraviolet radiation, simple molecules with lower chemical potential energy, carbon dioxide and water, and through a series of chemical reactions, they are able to produce more complex carbon molecules with higher chemical potential energy, namely glucose. Now that glucose can be built into larger biomolecules, things like amino acids to form proteins or fatty acids to form lipids, and they can even be put in larger um, molecules that store glucose. We call those carbohydrates, other types of carbohydrates, uh, things like starch and glycogen. And they can use those molecules to either form the structure of their bodies, or they can use them as a form of energy storage. Now, those organisms may break down some of those molecules themselves. They have made their own food, and they can break down those molecules to harvest the energy. Or, of course, other organisms can come along and eat them. And the molecules that these producers, photosynthetic organisms, have produced become the food for another kind of organism. However, the energy is still in these more complex molecules with higher chemical potential energy. They're not in a form that is usable to life. We have to break them down in the same way that a lump of coal or a chunk of wood is not immediately useful to us. We have to burn it in order to be able to get that energy out. So the way that works in living things is largely through a process we call respiration. Okay, not breathing respiration, uh, sometimes called cellular respiration. And there's different forms of this. Um, the most important ones to understand uh, or is that one is called aerobic respiration. And aerobic just means with oxygen. Okay? There's also anaerobic respiration, fermentation, which does not require oxygen. Now, if we think about, for a moment, aerobic respiration, that's what happens in humans. You can think of it as really very similar to combustion. It requires oxygen to occur, but it's much more controlled. It's not just sort of a flame going out of control. That wouldn't be very helpful to us. Right? So you can think of this as a form of controlled combustion that occurs in stages, allowing us to better harvest this energy as it's being released from these molecules with higher chemical potential energy. And as you know, we eventually produce these molecules with lower chemical potential energy, carbon dioxide and water. They're excreted uh, from our bodies. But as the molecules are being broken down, this energy is being released just like the roller coaster going down the hill. In our case, however, we want to get that energy in a form that is usable. Okay, and again, it's coming out of these molecules fairly quickly, and it's not the form that we immediately use to live our lives, right? To make our muscles move or to build the molecules and structures of our bodies. What happens is that a portion of the chemical potential energy uh, that is in glucose and other food molecules is actually transferred to another molecule called ATP. And this molecule still contains a bit of chemical potential energy that is useful to us. And this is the molecule we actually use, as I mentioned, to move or to build other molecules. So we're breaking down glucose and other food molecules in our body, transferring some of that energy to this molecule called ATP, a lot of ATP. And as we're doing that, just as in other types of combustion, we are releasing some energy as heat. Now you know this because you know that in organisms like humans, which are endotherms, our bodies are constantly warm. And that warmth is because we are breaking down so many of these molecules all the time that a lot of heat is being released from these processes of aerobic respiration. And as the heat is dissipating, we're sort of using it on the way out. Right? It is gradually coming out of our bodies, but it is serving a purpose in keeping us warm, keeping our body temperature uh, at a level that is best for the kinds of reactions that have to happen in our bodies. Right? So we're keeping our bodies warm as this heat is dissipating out. However, the heat will dissipate, and it will gradually go into the cooler environment and become lost to us, and we don't get to use that again. So we have to constantly eat more food in order to fuel this system right? Keep the fire burning. 
And as we do that, we are constantly producing heat. And again, you know this because if you do activities that require more energy, say exercise and move around, right, then you're going to be breaking down more food molecules in order to produce more ATP to fuel those processes and release more heat. And you know how you get a lot warmer when you start to exercise. Now, some organisms can't do aerobic respiration. Certain bacteria, yeast, things like that. So there is a form of respiration that is anaerobic, often called fermentation, um, that allow organisms to still access the chemical potential energy in molecules like glucose. Now, because they don't have oxygen available, it's a different series of chemical reactions, and they don't necessarily produce just these molecules. They produce other molecules you might be familiar with that are often important to us, things like methane and alcohol and lactic acid. Uh, and those molecules, of course, still contain some energy because they have more potential energy than something like carbon dioxide. But in any case, whether it's aerobic or anaerobic respiration or some other kind of process that allows organisms to access the chemical potential energy by breaking down the molecules and releasing carbon molecules with lower chemical potential energy, the key point is that some of that energy is released and converted to forms that allow living things to function, and always some of that energy is released in the form of heat. And that heat gradually becomes unusable to living systems. So organisms will always need to obtain more energy, use more food, in order to live their lives. And that's energy conversions made easy. Thanks for watching.